محمد يا أحمد يا حامد محمود يا قاسم يا فاتح يا شاهد مشهود يا بشير يا نذير يا رشيد يا رسول يا طه يا مصطفى يا رؤوف يا رحيم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم جنٹل مین آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک ٹو یو اباؤٹ دی پرسن لائف اینڈ ٹیچنگس آف ہولی پرافٹ محمد مصطفیٰ احمد مصطفیٰ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم بٹ بفور آئی ڈو دیٹ I would like to give short description about his family, about his tribe, Kaaba and Arabia. I now commence to talk about the background of the Holy Prophet. First, the background. Not that Quraysh and the other pagan tribes were hostile to Christianity. Christians sometimes came to do honor to the sanctuary of Abraham and they were made welcome like all the rest. Moreover, one Christian had been allowed and even encouraged to paint an icon of the Virgin Mary and the child Christ on an inside wall of the Kaaba. Here it sharply contrasted with all the other paintings, but Quraysh were more or less insensitive to this contrast. For them, it was simply a question of increasing the multitude of idols by another two and it was partly their tolerance that made them so impenetrable. Unlike most of his tribe, Varaka could read and had made a study of the scriptures and of theology. He was therefore capable of seeing that one of the Christ's promises generally interpreted by Christians as referring to the miracle of Pentecost, there were nonetheless certain elements which did not fit that miracle and must be taken to refer to something else, something which had not yet been fulfilled. But the language was cryptic what was the meaning of the words? And I quote, He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Varaka had a sister named Kutela, who was very close to him. He often speak to her about these things and his words had made so great an impression on her that thoughts of the expected prophet were often in her mind. Could it be that he was already in their midst? One of the sacrifices of the camels had been accepted. Abdul Mutalib made up his mind to find a wife for his reprieved son and after some consideration the choice fell on Amina, the daughter of Wahab, a grandson of Zohra, the brother of Kuse. Wahab had been chief of Zohra but had died some years previously and Amina was now a ward of his brother Wahab who had succeeded him 
as chief of the clan. Wuhib himself also had a daughter of marriageable age, Hala by name. And when Abdul Muttalib had arranged that his son should marry Amina, he asked that Hala should be given in marriage to himself. Wuhib agreed and all the preparations were made for double wedding to take place at the same time. On the appointed day, Abdul Muttalib took his son by the hand and they set off together for the dwelling of the Bani Zuhra. On the way, they had to pass the dwellings of Banu Asad. And it so happened that Kutela, the sister of Baraka, was standing at the entrance to her house, perhaps deliberately in order to see what could be seen. For everyone in Makkah knew of the great wedding which was about to take place. Abdul Mutilib was now over 70 years old, but he was still remarkably young for his age in every respect. And the slow approach of the two bridegrooms, their natural grace enhanced by the solemnity of the occasion was indeed an impressive sight. But as they drew near, Kutela had eyes only for the youngster man. Abdullah was for beauty the Joseph of his times. Even the oldest men and women of Quraysh could not remember having seen his equal. He was now in his 25th year, in the full flower of his youth, but Kutela was struck above all as she had been on other occasions, but never so much as now, by the radiance which let his face and which seems to her to shine from beyond this world, could it be that Abdullah was the expected prophet or was he to be the father of the prophet? They had now just passed her and overcome by a sudden impulse, she said, Oh, Abdullah, his father let his hand as if to tell him to speak to his cousin. Abdullah turned back to face her. She asked him where he was going. With my father, he said simply, not out of reticence, but because he felt sure that she must know that he was on his way to his wedding. She said, Take me here and now as thy wife, and thou shalt have as many camels as those that were sacrificed in thy stead. He replied, and I quote, I am with my father. I cannot act against his wishes, and I cannot leave him. The marriage between Abdullah and Amna and Abdul Mutlib and Hala took place according to plan, and the two couples stayed for some days in the house of Wuhib. During that time, Abdullah went to fetch something from his own house, and again he met Kutela, the sister of Varka. Her eyes searched his face with such earnestness that he stopped beside her, expecting her to speak. When she remained silent, he asked her why she did not say to him what she had said the day before. She answered, and I quote, the light has left thee that was with thee yesterday Today thou cannot fulfill the deed 
I had of thee, unquote. The year of the marriage was after death 569. The year following this has been known ever since as the year of the elephant, and it was momentous for more than one reason. In the desert of Arabia was Prophet Muhammad born, according to the Muslim historians, on April 20, 571. The name means highly praised, highly praised. He is the great mind among all the sons of Arabia. He means so much more than all the poets and kings that preceded and succeeded him in the impenetrable desert of red sand. When he appeared, Arabia was a desert and nothing. Out of nothing of the desert, a new world was fashioned by the mighty spirit of Muhammad. A new life, a new culture, a new civilization, a new kingdom which extended from Morocco to Indies and influenced the thought and life of three continents, Asia, Africa, and Europe. But there is another aspect of this problem. Man lives in society. Our lives are bound with the lives of so many.